crisis situation and John was able to get up what was it $875,000 to do that project and that's $875,000 that taxpayers from the town of Hadley did not have to pay um, it's things like that that he's done for this town over the years I wish he was here so we could recognize him um, but please feel free when you see him out and about to thank him for his service because he was an excellent state rep for the town of Hadley. <laughs> the warrant has been signed and posted appropriately. So we have a legal warrant. And at this time, I'm going to start by asking everybody to rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I. Thank you. At this time, I would like to call on Molly Keegan, and she has a dedication for the 2017 annual report, which is in the back, if you would like to pick up a copy. Thank you, Brian. Um, at this time, I would like to request that 
John and Bobby Muscovitz and their sister Joyce uh, come up in front of folks. Is Bobby here, John? No? Okay. Okay. So unfortunately, Bob and um, their sister Karen couldn't make it tonight. But um, the annual report for 2017 is being dedicated to John and Elsie Muscovitz, um, and we couldn't think of anything more, more appropriate this year. So the Town of Hadley is proud to dedicate the 2017 annual report to our outstanding citizens who have contributed so much to the Town of Hadley. It's fitting that the Town of Hadley's annual report dedication includes both John and Elsie Muscovitz because they did everything together including serving the town of Hadley and the surrounding communities. Both John and Elsie were graduates of Hopkins Academy. During 57 years of marriage, they raised a family, owned and ran their business, was given rubbish removal for over 30 years, and dedicated themselves to volunteering in various roles having to do with their children's, grandchildren's, and great-grandchildren's extracurricular clubs and organizations. Elsie was very well known for her volunteer service to the Girl and Boy Scouts. Lassie League is a majorette advisor at Hopkins Academy, 4-H club leader, and as an advocate for friends and family for special ed services. John was the Cub Master for Hadley Cub Scouts Pack 505 and built a 32-foot, four-lane Pinewood Derby track for them. John and Elsie's service together also extended beyond family to include our community. John served as a member of the Hadley Volunteer Fire Department from 1954 to 1985. After losing their daughter Nancy to cancer in 97, Elsie and John, along with other family members, became involved with the American Cancer Society, the Relay for Life of Hampshire County. They became known as Mr. and Mrs. Coffee, volunteering 24 hours of their time to serve coffee during the entire event. And in 2014, they were chosen as honorary survivor chairs for that event. Involved with the 4-H for decades, Elsie was the president of the Hampshire County Advisory Board and 4-H booth manager at the Three County Fair since the 1970s, for which she won the Bertha L. Easold Award, the highest honor volunteer award. John co-managed the food booth with Elsie, and in the mid-80s led, led the rebuilding of the food booth to its current size. For over 40 years, they volunteered thousands of hours of setting up, cooking, ordering, cleaning, and working at the 4-H booth at the Free County Fair. John and Elsie worked, both worked well into their retirement years at the Council on Aging in Hadley. After driving a school bus for 30 years, John became the Council on Aging's van driver for shopping and day trips. He also gave many volunteer hours to delivering food to homebound elders that participated in the Brown Bag Program. Elsie was the Council on Aging outreach worker for over 12 years, connecting with and doing intake for those that needed services, such as fuel assistance or food stamps. She served on the TD5 Advisory Committee from 2012 to 2017, and in addition, she volunteered as chair for the Hadley Triad Solf Council. Elsie passed away on November 4th of 2017 at the age of 76, and John, followed on March 30th, 2018, at the age of 79. John and Elsie loved serving others almost as much as they loved being together. The town of Hadley is very fortunate to have been the recipients of their time and service for so many years. They've set an example of community service for their families, for our town, and for everyone that knew them. So with that, um, we would like to dedicate the annual report for 2017 and give that to you, John and Joyce.
W. Fred Oakley Jr. Award is for Norman Barstow. Is Janet here? General Janet's here somewhere. Would you like to come up, Janet? No? You're not? Okay. <laughs> Fred, w. Fred Oakley Jr. Award was established by the Select Board to honor members of the community who embody the spirit of volunteerism and service to the town of Hadley. The 2017 recipient of this award is Norman Barstow Jr. Norman Barstow Jr. was a lifelong resident of Hadley, a graduate of Hopkins Academy in 1961, and dedicated volunteer of the town, his church, and his community. With his quiet and humble manner, Norm chose to live his life with kindness for all that he encountered. We all benefited from the results of his generous nature. Following the tradition set by his parents, Norman Sr. and Margaret, Norm served the First Congregational Church of Hadley for over 60 years. He was often said if it needed to be done, Norm was there. He served the Board of the Properties, the Board of Deacons, the Stewardship Committee, and as moderator. He was awarded the Golden Oakley Award in 2012 in recognition of many years of service. Norm joined the Public Safety Complex Building Committee in the town in 1991 and served as co-chair until the completion of the new Public Safety Complex in 1996. When the call went out for help to organize the 350th anniversary of Hadley in 2008, Norm answered and was named co-chair of the parade committee. The 350th parade was such a success that surrounding communities often turned to Norm for advice for their own celebrations. Norm went on to join, on to join the Hopkins Academy 350th Celebration Committee and was recognized during the celebration as an outstanding alumni. In the spring of 2011, Norm was appointed to the Cemetery Committee. He carried on the cemetery work in the spirit of his friend, Fred Oakley. Norm was the backbone of his committee until his death. When Norm passed on August 7, 2017, the town felt the loss of a generous man who embodied <clears throat> the belief that he could make the world a better place with his kindness and time. Well done, Norm. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. At this time, I'm going to introduce the head table to people that don't know who they are. I'll start with the select board, John Waskevitz. First name, Christian Stanley, David Phil, Molly Keegan, Joyce Chungle, Town Administrator David Nixon, Town Attorney Joel Bard, um, Town Clerk Jess Spanknable, Valerie Hood, uh, Terry Ushko, Gabriel Owen, and Amy Fine, our finance committee. Once again, you'll see we have a balanced budget tonight, and people sitting at these, these two tables have put a lot of time and effort into that. Having said that, the first order of business tonight is something that we started a few years ago. It's called the Consent Agenda. The Consent Agenda is made up of Articles 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. There was a handout, I'm not sure if everybody has it. Um, basically, all these articles here are housekeeping articles. I'll allow you to read through them. Um, if anybody has any questions, we can get an explanation. Um, but basically, the one vote will take care of these seven articles. Actually, I'm gonna make a motion and uh, ask for a move in a second and then we can Everybody can look at those. The motion will read, move that the town take articles one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven out of order, 
and they be passed as a cons by consent in accordance with the motion shown on the consent agenda distributed to this evening and further allow all officers, department heads, and agents of the town to address the town meeting on matters as may be informational. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Okay, so I'll allow everybody a few minutes to look at that. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, approach the microphone and ask that and we'll get you an answer. Edwin Matusko. Edwin Matusko, 116 Stockwood Street. A brief explanation about what we're doing on Article 4, please. Article 4. Yeah. We're transferring some balances, but David Nixon will speak to them. Every town meeting, we take a look at our uh, projects and if they've been completed and if there's a fund balance left at the end of that, we would like to return that money to the original pot from which it was taken. Or if it was a borrowing article, we have to declare the surplus or excess borrowing capacity from that project every year. So this is a way of returning money and cleaning up the uh, the, uh, the the the, 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 the uh, table of accounts. So the first two items are that we had $32.50 left over from a road paving project uh, for historic records preservation. We had $1,879.45. Uh, we'll be returning those to the original pots from which they came. And the last three are borrowing authorizations that are amended to match the cost of the project so we don't have small balances being reported to SEC and so forth. So it's a housekeeping article and it's a way of make, making sure that our uh, funds are as effective as possible. Thank you. Also, everyone may notice that under each article, there um, is how the Finance Committee, the Select Board, or the Capital Planning Committee, any committee, how you can see their votes there. I wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Is there any other questions about the articles that make up the consent agenda? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Please signify a yes vote with your green card Thank you. Anybody opposed? Please raise your green card. Any abstentions? Please raise your green card. The consent agenda passes unanimously. I'm sorry I have a cold, so I don't sound my normal self. At this time, at the moderator's discretion, I am going to move article number 23 and 24 forward to be taken up at this time. These are petitioned articles. Submitted by petitions. I will read, hold on one second. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna debate both articles 23 and 24 at the same time, but we will take separate votes. So I just wanted to let everybody know that. So when you come up to the microphone, you can speak to both articles at once or 23 or 24 specifically. So what I'll do is I'm going to read um, the petition for Article 23 and 24, and then I'll ask for a motion in a second, and then we can start to discuss it. Article 23, submitted by petition. We, the undersigned residents of the town of Havley, petitioned the Board of Selectmen to place the following article on the May 3rd, 2018 annual town meeting 
with the following question. To see if the town will move the location of the new proposed senior center project from the quote unquote Hooker School 2.6 acre site located behind the current senior center to a new location described as quote unquote River Drive and Stockbridge Road site with approximately nine acres or to take any action there too. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? All right, so that's Article 23. Now I'll read Article uh, Petition Article 24. We, the undersigned residents of the town of Hadley, petition the Board of Selectmen to place the following article on the May 3rd, 2018, annual town meeting to read as follows. To rescind the vote that was taken on October 27th, 2016, Article 7, to build a new senior center on a 2.6 acre of town-owned land known as the Hooker School lot, and to appropriate $5.3 million to pay for the cost of design, construction, and equipping a new senior center, and rescind the August 29, 2017 Article 1, requesting $1.8 million in additional funds and deduct any funds expended up to date or take any action thereto. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Okay, both articles have been moved and seconded. At this time, I'll call on a representative for the petitioners to speak to both of them, and then I'll open it up. Um, I also have the building committee that would like to make a quick comment, and then I'll open it up to everyone. Do we have anybody from the petitioners who'd like to speak to this article first? Mr. Donald Pipp. Once again, I will try and limit the speaking time to about four minutes, Mr. Pitt. Okay. Thank you. Just want to nullify it for All right. I will try not to. Uh, good evening. I am Don Pitt. I live at 234 River Drive, and I am an Army veteran, a member of the American Legion for 43 years. Uh, why the secret ballot? I think there's a big question why we're doing that. The reason for that is if everybody remembers the turmoil when we were fighting the elementary school, we had fathers and mothers not talking to children, neighbors not talking to each other. We want to avoid that confrontation at the utmost. Uh, secondly, why did we request to move the articles up? We could have waited to the end and maybe most of the elderly would have got tired and left. That isn't our intention. Our intention is to have a true and honest vote when everyone is in attendance. How did we arrive at this situation? This is a battle that the Legion never wanted to fight. Uh, it started out with the staging area and we lost a great deal of money financially, but we wanted to be a good neighbor to the town and they continued on. But then in early on in February, we found out that the present location for the senior center didn't have enough green space and parking area, so then they had to proceed to move into the upper parking lot the town has used since the early 50s. Moving to the new site, it's very advantageous. What it's gonna do is open up that whole site for the library to forge ahead, and plus, no discussion has been given to what's going to happen with the parking with the old library. If that becomes a municipal use, where are people going to park? So that would allow them to park there. The present site allows no expansion whatsoever. Uh, the whole lot is like a postage stamp with two large buildings put in on it. All of the adjacent property to it, if you went to purchase it, the selectmen didn't even negotiate the prices, but they were asking for around 475000 per acre. Why is it advantageous to move to the, the nine and a half acre site? I said there's no room at the present site. <coughs> Green space parking, snow removal, drainage is inadequate at that site. The building design would be minimal to move to North Hadley because it's being built on a slab. So they wouldn't have to do anything there. There would be minimal construction for parking and driveways and things of like that. The drainage situation would be eliminated. 
Uh, right now, they put drainage in between the two buildings that's gonna have to be maintained. If you ever seen them put them in, they're like dog houses with stones underneath where things could leach into them. They're gonna have to be maintained. One man and nobody has any idea of how that water is going to go into the southerly direction into the houses that are budded. The new site will allow for community gardens, pavilions for reunions and other special activities. There'll be walking areas. There'll be light impact uh, exercise areas and plenty of room to grow in the future. As I said, the other site doesn't have any room whatsoever. The facts before us have been brought, been brought forth in an adequate way. That's how we found out about the change in February. You know, and this thing's supposedly been going on for three years, and we find out in February, now they have to take the upper parking lot. Uh, the Legion has always been able to compromise, and we still want to compromise. The lawsuit isn't gonna do anybody any good. You know, it's gonna cost the town money, it's gonna cost the Legion money. We could use that money that we're gonna to have to put into the lawsuit to begin to upgrade our facilities. So nonprofit organizations can use it, which we don't charge them anything. We've done things for the senior center in the last three years. We did, did uh, chicken to go for them. All our veterans volunteered so they could stabilize their financial situation. We're not the bad guy in this situation. We want to compromise just like everybody else, but nobody's come to talk to us. Thank you. Mr. David Tudor, Chairman, Building Committee. Either way. Okay. Uh, thank you. My name is David Tudor, and I'm the Chairman of the Municipal Building Committee, also 346 River Drive. As you know, for the last four years, your uh, Municipal Buildings Committee has focused on providing recommendations pertaining to the disposition of town buildings uh, and providing the select board with a path towards improving and replacing them. On June 8, 2016, I presented the committee's first plan to the select board. Following our initial goals of addressing first response, police and fire needs, and public safety, health, and welfare, our next priority was uh, to construct the new senior center facility. Uh, as a committee, we further recommended through the course of our open meetings uh, over the last few years that the town follow the master plan document and centralize community services in or around our town center. This aligns with our goal to site the building strategically close to other important town services and near to uh, several 55 and older residential developments. You'll be reminded tonight that our recommendation was validated through time, uh, several uh, votes through town meeting and debt overrides. As we debate the need to locate this building on this site or whether or not to construct this building at all, we'd like to raise several important points to consider in your decision. The existing senior center, despite projects which uh, will prolong its life for a few more years, has surpassed its useful life. Uh, we all know that. The building core and shell and mechanical electrical systems all require significant town investment. If we don't build this building now, we're going to have to invest more money in that one. The Town Senior Center Building Committee, uh, including representation from our own uh, building committee, has developed what we think is a workable and appropriate, appropriately sized uh, building program. They've toured many other similar projects from other towns uh, and led by owner's project manager have aligned the cost uh, of the building and the site uh, with their available budget. We have examined the current site configuration uh, with the parking lot uh, where the library and the senior center share a single parking lot and find this to be the most efficient, maintainable, and cost-effective solution. Beyond the redesign costs associated with the two distinct lots, parking overflow conditions between the library and the senior center would extremely, uh, be extremely confusing for town residents to navigate and would result in a loss of overall parking capacity. We have not specifically examined the American Legion building occupancy limits, but we believe that the parking provided at their location and the space offered to them by the town would result in more parking than legal occupancy of their facility could even allow. While we had hoped to purchase additional town-owned property through an RFP process, which was uh, provided a few years ago, uh, resulting in a less compressed site plan, uh, we are unable to uh, proceed with that. Despite resulting 
condensed site conditions and compromises made by the two building committees, we feel that this project is right-sized and appropriately cited for our very small community. Thank you. Thank you, David. <laughs> Any other discussion? Edwin Matusko. 116 Sector. Could someone give a brief explanation of what a yes vote means, what a no vote means to both of these articles? Sure. Whether they proceed or not proceed or what? Okay. Very good question. At this time, um, I was giving the heads up about 4.30 today in writing from Joel Barn, our town attorney, and I'm going to let him speak to this. Um, basically, right now, both of these questions are non-binding, and I'll let Joel explain that. But because of the importance and the amount of people that have attended, um, the select board and myself think it's important that we go ahead and take this vote. I know there's people on the select board that are very interested to see what this vote is, even though it is non-binding. So I'll let Joel explain real quickly why these are non-binding votes for these two articles. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Joel Bard, Town Council. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm also going to speak to both articles. So it begins with this body, town meeting, having voted twice to appropriate funds and to authorize borrowings, as you heard in the second motion. The important issue here, and then the main principle, is that it has to do with the separation of powers at the municipal level. So town meeting is the legislative body, the select board is the executive body. So just as we have Washington, we have three levels of government here, and the third level of government, the judicial branch, the local level is not relevant to this discussion. So town meeting exercised its discretion and voted those, uh, those two votes to authorize the borrowing and expend the funds. Based on those votes, the select board exercised its executive function and executed two contracts. There's a design services contract and the hiring of a, an OPM, an owner's project manager. Based on those commitments, the town has changed its position and has bound itself to these third parties. And very importantly, each of these contracts as is required in municipal uh, municipal law and municipal governance, whenever the town enters into a contract, there must be a, a contract for involving funds in any event. There must be a certification by the town accountant that the funds are available. And I've reviewed the contracts, and in each instance, there is a certification by the town accountant that the funds are available. And there are cases where someone having done work for the town and then is not paid sues the town, and what courts look at is whether or not there's a town accountant certification, and if there's not, the court says the municipality is not bound. But when there is, then the municipality is bound, the contractor, as I said, changes its position, is assured of being paid, and makes whatever commitments it has to make to undertake its responsibilities under the contract. So now, in two different ways, town meeting is being asked to uh, either change the project or rescind the project. And of course, in each instance, the town meeting votes identify the location of the project. So it's my opinion that those actions are outside of the authority of town meeting. Town meeting had the authority, as I said, to approve the projects, to authorize the funding. But now that the select board has taken the steps that it has, town meeting cannot undo them. What town meeting can do is vote, as the moderator said, take a non-binding position, and that, in a sense, is advice to the select board, signifying the town meeting would like to see the building move or would like to see the whole project uh, halted by withdrawing all of the funds. So it is therefore, in my opinion, I advise the moderator earlier today that these two votes would be non-binding votes. Thank you. What are the yes votes? Would you like to know? Oh, yes, thank you. Right, that was part of the question. So if you vote yes in the first one, you're then signifying that you would like the select board to change the location. If you vote yes on the second one, you're indicating that you want the select board to consider 
halting the two projects if you vote no it means you don't want to change the location and if you vote no it means that you are satisfied with the earlier votes taken and you don't want the selectmen the select board to reconsider the projects John? Yeah, John Wistowski for Sunrise Drive. I kind of disagree with you, uh, Town Council. I um, contacted the Law Division of the Department of Revenue. And what, what that Law Division said, if the contract to construct these projects, being the library, being the senior center, then you could not rescind that. But if, if the contract uh, wasn't put into fact, you could. There is no contract on either project. Okay. So, you know, saying that, you know, what you say, well, the contract, they spend X amount of dollars. That uh, petition reads to exempt everything that's been so far. So there is no contractor, no contract that would go unpaid because that would be excluded from that resend. And, the, and the, I'm talking on, on, the, on this thing here. There was a letter sent, and I got a copy of it from the American Legion dated February 26th, asking town council to, to redo this if it needed certain wording and get back to it, all right? This to me was really like an underhanded deal the last 12th hour that town council from February 26th couldn't give uh, an opinion, but right before at six o'clock, he walks into the selectmen's meeting and he hands this uh, opinion. That to me, I, I just, that's not normal. You know, I, I just, I don't know why they do that. And uh, as far as these vote uh, petitions, the one to move would open it up so they would have expansion. And we're not building these buildings for today. We're building these buildings for the future. So why doesn't people open their eyes and look exactly what they're stuffing in a little postage stamp lot? And the second one, that, that is to take away the funding and make them go back to a town meeting, just like South Hadley's doing now. They hire the same architect Hadley has, they're holding their forms, they're explaining what it costs to on our tax rate, which we were misled. I know my tax didn't go up $95, it was $600, far from $95. And there was more misinformation and not the truth that was One minute, John. Told, told at that town meeting. So we're looking to say, let's, let's do this the right way. And let's take a second look at this because these two buildings are being built for the future generations. Why should we mess these up? And again, if this parking lot takes on the Legion and that building is put on there, and I ask as a planning board member and I ask as myself, why can't you flip the building, put the parking to the thing there, and these projects could work? Nothing doing. Andy Morris, Ribbon, 45 Roosevelt Street. So, if these votes are now non-binding, if one or the other passes, does the select board then have to vote as to whether to continue them or to stop them? That it would be an inf informational vote to the select board for them to do with what they want. So, it wouldn't be a directive. Okay, so it doesn't stop the project. No. Unless the select board has a special vote to decide Unless to overturn the previous decision? Basically, these two, because Joel has deemed them non-binding, this will be two non-binding votes where the select board will have accurate information on how this town meeting feels about those two articles. So they can either continue on 
as they deem fit. They don't have to do anything with them, or could. So it's up to them what they do with the information, basically. So if these articles pass, it then becomes the select board's decision as to whether they go forward. Yes, because like Joel said, everything is now at the executive level okay. in the town government. All right. Well, man, I certainly don't want to do that to you people. That'd be a hell of a meeting. Um, okay, I just wanted to find out what happened. Thank okay. You. I'm Lynn McKenna, I'm from Two Kentfield Drive, um, and I'd like to say that um, that I think as a town, we've elected a select board who have promised that they are gonna oversee all of the building projects in the town and the space and assure that everything is shared and everything is properly shared. We have an appointed building committee who seems to be uh, very knowledgeable and all experts in their field. They have recommended a master plan for the town um, that plans uh, ahead for new spaces. I think something that we haven't done a good job on in this town before. The recommendation that our services be centralized in the center of town and particularly in the, in the, um, in the case of the senior center where we have several senior living facilities right in the center of town. So why we would ask those seniors to be bused or have to travel to North Hadley to a senior center. It's also not on a bus line. We have seniors living in uh, Greenleaves apartments who take the bus to the senior center. That's not gonna be an option if the senior center is moved to um, North Hadley. So that is not planning in advance. That's not thinking in advance um, in the way that our building committee is doing right now. So I respect them. I respect the select board. I respect the town that's voted twice for these projects and the location of these projects. And I respect the time of the people in this town and the time that we're wasting voting and voting again. So I urge people to vote no on these two petitions. Mr. Brown, moderator, my name is Tony Biden. I'm at uh, Five Cold Spring Lane and Happy. Um, I think that it's obviously very unfortunate that we're still here talking about this issue, but it's not really surprising. I think the, the from, from the start, this has been a very kind of convoluted process. And I think it still is. I think the fact that the town council, a half hour before the meeting, did you say? Directly before the meeting, gave an opinion that's non-binding. I don't understand why this wasn't talked about earlier. If you have a town council, that should have been addressed before this, I think. Um, I do have a petition, uh, an amendment to the petition. And the reason is that I think we have one organization suing the town and it's really divided a lot of people here. And I think we need to take, we need to take uh, some time and to resolve this. I think we can come to a compromise. I think we're all, we all have the same uh, interests here. And I think this can be resolved. But to, to take this vote, which uh, as I said, I, I really think that's ridiculous that an opinion was given right before the meeting that it's not binding. And, and now we're supposed to take a vote on it. It's not really clear what's gonna be done either way if we do vote on it. We need to take some time and resolve this. So my petition is that we uh, amendment, amendment, amendment. Apologize. Place this project on hold until a compromise can be met with the American Legion, and the threat of lawsuits will be dropped. It may cost us some money, but lawsuits will cost probably more money, and, and the whole town will lose. The lawyers will win. But uh, and, if the, and if the project does go forward, it's going to go forward on a divided basis. Let's take it. Let's take the time and resolve this, and then the project will go forward in the right way. As I said, the, from the beginning, there were questions about the, the, the numbers that were brought out, which were way off, and then another uh, additional money was added, and it was, it was very convoluted, and I think very confusing for a lot of people. So, uh, I'll hand you this amendment, and
One second to review this written amendment. Tony, is that instead of all the language in Article 24, so I, we would be removing? So what you're saying is? <coughs> yes. So we have, we have a written amendment. Um, it's an amendment for Article 24. And it would replace the language in the petition to Article 24. And the new amendment would read, to place this project on hold until a compromise can be met with the American Legion and the threat of lawsuits dropped. Do I have a second for the amended motion? I have a second. So we can now discuss the amended motion and then we'll have to vote on the amended motion first. On the amendment for Article 24. Does anybody want to speak to the amendment to Article 24? George Moyari, 22 tomorrow. Uh, question, would this article be non-binding? I have a, a big problem that these non-binding articles that came in at six o'clock tonight are gonna end up in court somewhere. And if, if the court case went towards that our, our town council was, was wrong, would this now become a binding question? Or do we have to come back here again? Because if we are solely uh, considering 500 residents here and we have one you know, lawyer making a decision at four o'clock this afternoon, I have big problems with that. Um, as a taxpayer and as a resident, that we're sitting all here wondering how we're gonna take a vote. There's a lot of people here. Why wasn't it brought out six months ago or, or whenever the article was, was submitted, whether it was a month ago or three months ago. Um, so I question the whole time frame of this coming out. And I'd like to know, would either one of these articles be binding or a lawsuit next week and it goes to the state attorney general and they say, no, you are wrong. These are, are they gonna be binding or are we gonna have to come back and spend a lot of money to have another town meeting? Thank you, George. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, Joel Bard. <clears throat> Let me explain first, these are petitioned articles. When a petitioned article is filed, our advice to every community in the state, we represent 125 plus, is to the select board, is that you have to put it on the warrant as written. So there was a letter sent to the select board uh, from the post commander saying if there's something with the wording, could town council fix it? First of all, we're not allowed to fix it. And secondly, where the article is seeking to rescind the project, how do you fix that article? I mean, it's either yes or no. I mean, the article could have been, the petitioned article could have been six words long, <clears throat> excuse me, to rescind the votes taken earlier uh, on the senior center project. So the, uh, the fact that, uh, I mean, I, I don't see what difference it would have made if we provided the opinion weeks earlier or today. It wouldn't have changed. It, everyone would have shown up anyway to express their view, yes or no. Uh, but that's, that's our ruling now. Whether the town might be sued, let me state the obvious, the town's already been sued. So uh, I'm not sure what would be gained by a second lawsuit, but that is the, the lay of the land. But I just want to make very clear that there's nothing about these articles that could have been changed to make a difference in terms of whether 
in our opinion, it was binding or not binding. And let me also say that before rendering this opinion, I consulted with two of the other most senior partners in my firm, and we all concurred in that opinion. Thank you. The question also was whether or not the amendment is binding, and the answer is the same. It would not be binding, it would be guidance to the select board. Richard Wilka, 28 from our Road. I was here at both previous town meetings where this was uh, approved, the funding for the two projects was approved, and I am not opposed to either one. However, I think there is a definite need for a compromise here. Uh, we, uh, on both occasions, I seen a uh, proposed architectural architect's rendering of the building, and there was no site plan involved. There was no site plan. And I think that was a deliberate and blatant oversight on the part of the uh, building committee. They, uh, it was sold on the premise that the building would not interfere with that upper parking lot and leave. It would be closer to the existing senior center. And on that premise, I feel that it should be moved closer to the, and this building committee refuses to do that. And that's what I'm opposed to. Now, all we have to do is move it slightly and put a uh, flesh. And that will solve the whole problem. I rest my case. Thank you. Yes, you are. Okay. We, we're dealing with the amendment right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. And the amendment reads. Oh, I, oh, okay. right. <laughs> but I have to say this about town meeting is the legislative body. We come in here, this, I'm not correct, this is my 45th town meeting. 45. Wow. You, they work for us. The select board works for us. You tell them what to do, and you do it. Okay. I, don't care what, I don't care what the lawyer says. You didn't That's do it when you were on the board. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, well, sometimes. I see, looking at this plan, I have some problems with it. Uh, number one, I'm not going to be around to make that last pink. And I'm thinking about the ones that are coming behind me, the struggle they have to do with life, to come over here and be asked to be paying for a building that they can't use. That's number one. I feel that the town would be better served in having a building that would have a senior center, uh, town hall, because we're going to be coming back here looking for a town hall in 10 years, have a town hall, some of the executive buildings like uh, Park and Rec, uh, Channel 5 needs expansion. We could all do that in one building. Uh, I don't think having it of just one use for this building is the way to go. I think we can serve the town better if we put this on hold, have a different plan, Perhaps maybe you can purchase land to the north of Hooker School, the normal land between Hooker School and uh, Golden Court. And that would allow for expansion, buildings in the future, parking, all that stuff. It's just something to consider. Thank you. Jane. Jane Nevin Smith, the chair of the Senior Center Building Committee. I'd like to. Uh, refer back to the earlier statement that this was not shown on the plans. You can look on the channel five, it had a hideous uh, taping of the forum we had in May, May 25th last year, where the plan showed the building sitting exactly where it's sitting now. That same plan was shown on the April, August 29th meeting and on the pre-informational meeting for last summer when the town voted the additional monies. The site, once we had architects working, has always been with the building on the east end of the lot. David Ryman, tenants of Court. Um, people are concerned about the uh, petition not being binding and that the select board, you know, has to act on it or, you know, like, let's say hypothetically, we did vote to basically postpone the project of yes tonight. Uh, 
something, no offense to the select board, I personally I support the senior center, but if they didn't follow the wishes of the people, we could just vote them out. I mean, it's a democracy. So if, if they don't, if we vote yes tonight and the select board doesn't follow our wishes, we just vote them out. Correct. <laughs> That's how it works. Suzanne? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm Suzanne Trevisano. I'm the uh, Happy Council on Aging Director. I know this is um, a very contentious issue, um, and I wish it wasn't. I'm sad that this has divided the community. We went into this project thinking that it was going to serve the whole community. We went into it um, offering from the get-go that their overflow parking would come right into ours. We have a opposite operating hours than they do. I'm speaking about the Legion. Um, and so we were happy to offer them the parking lot with, side, with, with a Segway going right into our parking lot, sidewalks, and lighting. Um, we're, ha you know, we're happy to share that. We're still happy to share that. Um, we did, actually, we don't want you to think, and this is addressing this, Mr. Willis, um, wanting to come to a compromise, and what I've heard um, that they would accept as a compromise is actually moving the building a little bit more westward, and then having that parking lot remain in back. So we did that scenario with the OPMs and with the architects, and it doesn't end up working, and I'm gonna tell you the logistics of why. If you go from the east border of the parcel, there's a 35 foot no disturb due to the wetland from Wansix onto the town's property. To have a parking lot, you have to do it 35 feet out from that, which means the building would have to start at a minimum of 95 feet westward, westward because you'd have a, that 35 foot buffer You'd have a double lane for traffic to go in and out, which is 24 feet. Then you would have an additional 36 feet for parking on both sides of that double lot. So you're talking 95 feet. After that 95 feet from the westward border, you have an additional 25 to 35 feet for the propane tanks, the generators, the condensers, and the other mechanicals that are gonna be powering the building behind it, um, which means that the building starts at approximately 130 feet west of the east border, okay? That eliminates all the green space behind there, which comes up to 20,504 feet of the necessary 28,969 feet of green space that we have that we need okay that's one those are the logistics of why that scenario doesn't work not that we didn't look at it okay secondly it's not an ideal scenario for the building insofar as being a senior center we hired um, lifespan designs along with EDM architects because they're specialists in designing a building for people as they age along with schools and along with um, safety complexes, there's, there's safety issues. When you move the building that far west, what happens is, is that people, uh, uh, it'll encourage people to use the Route 9 access through the Legion's lot to get to that back parking lot because that's what they're gonna see from Route 9, which we don't want. We want all of our traffic coming in from Middle Street and going in a circular fashion so that everybody's going the same way. It also means we can't see what's happening in that back parking lot. One minute. Thank you. It'll necess necessitate redesigning the building to add a rear entrance if we do that. It negates the safety feature of a line of safe from the front of the built west entrance knowing who's in the building at all times. In this day and age, a rear entry point allows access to the building without being noticed. It's not a good idea. I also have the breakdown of what that would cost, $541,000, in addition to the over 400 that we've already spent. We wanna be friends, we wanna be good neighbors. 
It's not logistically possible, but we'd love to have you use our lot for your overflow parking.
of good people at one at a time. So that's for start, because we, the executive branch, do count. And we, the executive branch, are binding. There's a lot of good people that run this town that give up themselves every day and just try and make this a better place. They're looking to the future and they see that we're going to need new buildings. I say that's great. But the senior center issue, which has brought all this contention, was just done in a way that I think could have been done better. At first, I heard at the senior center where I go that they wanted $7 million. But it wouldn't quite fly at that price. So they asked for five. That flew, and it flew in part because it was a special election. And it's the people that have cards in the game that come to the special election. Those money deciding votes should be made by all of us in a general election. And I hope in the future that's what we can do. So I know my time is running out, but I'm going to ask everybody here who is so inclined to vote against the senior center as it now is, put it back to our good select people, and we can reallocate with a better plan. The contention isn't necessary. We all love this town. We all want it to grow. We understand we're going to need buildings. Tell us what the building is really for. Let's build those buildings. And there'll be plenty of room for the seniors along the way. Jennifer Holmwood, 134 West Street. Can you just, um, this is an informational question, if we vote for pausing the project, it sounds like there's no definite end point, so it sounds like there's nothing definite that it would come up again in the fall meeting. So clarification on that. And second, is there, are there any costs associated with pausing it? In other words, what are the, you know, what are the, what are the downsides cost-wise or in terms of projects being able to go forward or not go forward if we pause it? Well, first of all, the amendment that, that we're discussing, we haven't voted on the amendment yet, was to place the project on hold until a compromise can be met between the Legion and the threat of the lawsuits are dropped. So that's that's your timing mechanism. If, uh, right, and that could take, she's laughing, that could take a long time. Um, that's just for that amendment for Article 24. Obviously, if the project's put on hold, there's money that's already been spent, number one. Um, indirectly, it affects the library and the library project. Okay, so- Can you explain about that a little bit? Well, I can. Um, in a, you know what, normally, oh, she wanted to know how it affected the library. So, um, Molly King and I also sit on the uh, Library Building Committee, and so this, this conversation took place, so I just thought, um, and certainly if I misstate anything, um, anybody on the other building committees or David or Finance Committee, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, just a couple of, these are just facts that you should know. Um, according to both of the um, OPMs, any delay in construction you're looking at, um, and they, they waver between a four and a 5% uh, inflation factor. Um, there is an issue right now with the current administration where depending on how much um, steel may be used, the steel tariffs are kind of in play right now in Washington. That could come into play in the future. Uh, or, or it could be a non-issue again, depending on how things get negotiated in Washington. But, um, so that's something to know. The other thing has to do with the grant money. So um, part of the discussion here is that to the extent that the senior center project is put on hold in, in any way, you know, whether it's moving it or, or defunding it or, or 
um, the amendment that we have in front of us, that um, the meter is still running, so to speak, on the grant money for the library project. So the library has certain deadlines that have to be met in order to continue with that grant money. Um, so that's not to say that the grant money would be lost, it's just that the library project must stay on a certain time schedule, otherwise that grant money is jeopardized. Okay, so, um, and I don't remember the exact dates, but um, again, it's been imperative that the two OPMs have been working together hand in hand, and the library OPM has already raised their hand and said, you know, we're running into, um, you know, kind of short condensed time frame here. Um, actually, I think Mark Sullivan's here tonight. And so the only alternative then would be if the senior project was like installed, stopped, whatever, um, in order for the library to continue moving forward, the hooker stool would still have to come down, which means that there would be costs associated with finding another home for the senior center. So I, I just want everybody to understand the totality of that. There are a lot of moving parts, so Yes, there could be very significant costs involved, up to and including, ultimately, the potential loss of grant money to the extent we can't figure this out. Um, I just also want to say that, you know, and from a select board standpoint, we are certainly um, remain optimistic and hopeful that we will indeed be able to work something out with the specific issue that the Legion has, which is relative to parking. And I think you'll realize tonight the two articles that are in front of us really have little to nothing to do with parking for the Legion. The grant money for the library, can you just tell us that amount again? Five. 3.9 million. So that, that could all be in jeopardy. Theoretically, again, we would be working, I'm sure, very hard, depending on the will of the, the town to try to figure out a way to make that work. Thank you. Hi, Dina Friedman, 16 Barstow Lane. I have a concern about the amendment with the word compromise. It seems to me like, while we can hope that everybody would be compromising in good faith, um, it would be very easy for one party or another to, you know, kind of say, well, I'm only going to compromise by doing X. Um, especially, I, can, I, I also have two questions. One is, I don't understand why the Legion cannot use the senior center parking lot, why that isn't a compromise. And the second question relates to something a previous speaker said about taxes going up. And my understanding being um, in town meeting that there, we've been voting on a lot of different things. And so I just wanted clarification that the senior center taxes was, you know, that was part of the reason taxes went up, but there were also a lot of other things that we voted for that made taxes go up, and I think that should be a clarification around the project. But they, I, what they were referencing for the taxes was, there was a specific amount that was, of, of tax that was associated with the senior center project. So that, that's what that resident was commenting about. Yeah, I, I understand that, but I just was, confused because the resident said that um, his taxes went up a lot and I'm assuming that that was kind of the total amount that his taxes went up, some of which was related to the senior center and some of which was related to other things. Is that correct or not? Probably. Okay, thank you. Hello, uh, Bianca Epstein, Hawken on the road. So I guess I have a clarification question. Is, are we having all this contention around the lack of parking spaces? Is that the only objectionable issue that's threatening lawsuits and getting in the way of going forward with what we voted for? I mean, by the American Legion, I guess I'm asking, is it just about the parking spaces? I guess I'll have to refer to Mr. Pichinski to answer that question. Is the Legion's sole uh, issue with the senior center parking in regards to that, that, that parking lot, correct? I would say yes. Yes. If we could compromise on the parking, this whole thing would go away. Okay. Well, so can I, can I just ask how many parking spaces are in jeopardy? What, 
What is the number of parking spaces that people are trying to compromise or, or disagree with? Okay. Off the top of my head, I don't have an idea. Does anybody? All, all I can say is we have an existing parking lot here today. That's what it should but, be made. But, but there's a question, are we talking uh, jeopardizing 30 parking spaces, 500, 140? There is a known factor. Hold on. 30. 30. So let me just ask you. Look at how many of us are here today, and look at all the resources. If we're talking about 40 parking spaces, are there no other ways in the town of Hadley Center we can create 40 parking spaces? I mean, really, what kind of a town are we? Okay. <laughs> A valid point, but I would, I would also, I would also make the observation that there's, there's people here tonight that weren't here at other meetings, and they're not worried about parking spaces. They're worried about the project as a whole. So I think there's some of that here too. But clearly, the Legion's issue is over parking spaces. And I, when I sat on the select board, we used to deal with these issues quite a bit, and I can't imagine that we got 500 people in here right now because the Legion and the Select Board can't come up with a compromise over 45 parking spots or 50 or whatever it is. I mean, are you kidding me? Seriously. But, but, hold on. I don't, I don't normally do this. Um, this year in the election, there was an editorial in the paper about me having bias towards articles, but, um, one of the things you give up when you become moderator is you don't have the ability to speak to issues. But I'm going to step out of my moderator's hat and I'm going to put my former select board hat on, my resident hat. And I have, I will tell you, as a member of the former member of the Capital Planning Committee, the last thing you want to start doing in a town is building capital projects based off of petitions. And why you have 500 people sitting in here tonight is, is because you're potentially building two buildings, two capital projects, based off of petitions. We have a lot of talented people that sit at these tables, yet we passed two petitioned articles for two capital projects, and now we're sitting in town meeting at 10 and nine with 500 people here because we got another petition to stop the other petition. Does anybody see where this is going? Okay, that's enough of my soapbox for tonight. Joy from 1595 Tomorrow Road, Hadley. Thank you for voicing your opinion. I think even though you're the moderator, you do have a right to speak your mind, and we should know what that is. Um, but that's not what I came up here to talk about. Um, I'm not speaking to the amendment. I don't think the amendment should even be considered. It's ridiculous. The town of Hadley already voted on this issue, voted on this issue to, excuse me? Oh, I thought you were calling me ridiculous. No, please. Um, please. Okay, sorry. So yes, we voted um, on this issue already, and now over parking spaces, which the director just got up and talked to us and said that's not an issue. They can have their parking spaces. It's ridiculous. Um, so Lynn spoke earlier about the bus route. That is super important to seniors and green leaves. It's super important for the community where there are the two housing. I'm just going to repeat what she said. Um, we are there, the senior center is so willing to compromise on this. I know my mom and dad fought and, and fought for this. This was so important to them. Mom was laying in her hospital bed so happy when we came in in August to tell her about the, the first thing she asked when dad walked into the room is, did it pass? And that, that was so important. And I, for one, am gonna vote no on both of these um, because not because it's what they wanted to do, but because I know it's the right thing to do. Um, Mr. DeKevitz talked about um, 
our kids. This isn't going to have anything to do with our future. It is our future. I grew up in Hadley. We used the parking lot, and it didn't affect business back in 19 whatever. I'm not going to say, but um, we used that parking lot for softball games when there was a softball field there. And like Suzanne said, it's different times of the day. They're going to let them use the space. I don't know what we're, we're even talking about. I think you should all vote no. Thank you. My name is Meli Moraj. I have spoken for a of you. Your address, address, please. I live in Belcher Town but I am a tenant in Hadley, in American Legion. Am I have a right to speak? Uh, what, no. <laughs> uh, unless, unless town meeting uh, votes to let her speak. Last two meetings, you guys let me spoke. We have a, we have a non-resident who is a member of the Legion. I'm uh, a tenant in the Legion, I have a business there. All right, she's a tenant at the Legion. She has a business there. All in favor of letting her speak, please signify with your green card. Hold them up high, please. Okay, all those opposed to her speaking. I'm sorry, ma'am, but that's yeah. okay. I was going to answer this lady's question because I'm the person who would answer that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry. That thing's done for me. <laughs> Randy Eiser, two out of you drive. Item number one. No matter what we vote on at this meeting or at any other meeting, there will always be contention. There's no way this thing is going to get cleared up and there's going to be no contention. Item number two, we talk about compromise. We've been talking about it forever. And I thought I knew what it meant, but I, I don't see any of that happening. So I looked it up. And compromise is an agreement or settlement of a dispute that is reached by each side making concessions. I see one side making concessions to this issue, and that is the senior center. The Legion says, give us our parking or we sue. And that is not a compromise. And remember, we're calling the amendment. So all in favor of calling the amendment, please signify with your green card. Thank you. Opposed? Question has been called. We will vote on the amendment. I will read the amendment again. The amendment is for Article 24. It's to place this project on hold until a compromise can be met with the American Legion and the threat of lawsuits is dropped. All in favor of the amendment, please signify with your green card. Thank you. All opposed to the amendment, signify with your green card. The amendment fails. So, we're back to the original petitioned articles on Article 23 and 24. And if there's no new discussion, oh, this gentleman's coming up. Sorry, I don't want to hold anybody up. Uh, I, too, am a, a veteran of the... Name, address, sir. Uh, D. Thomas Touche, 115 West Street. I don't want to hold this meeting up. I know everybody wants to get out of here. I, too, am an Army veteran. I was a paramedic in the 173rd Airborne. Thank you for your service. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I've lived in the town of Hadley since 1987. I've lived in multiple towns throughout this country. I belong to seven different American legions. 
think Ken Lee is the most beautiful top I've ever heard of. And I think this lawsuit by the American Legion is the most asinine thing I've ever heard. I've been a member of, like I said, several American Legions. I've been to many meetings. Most American Legion meetings are in the evenings or on the weekends. They don't need extra parking. There's plenty of parking over there. There's plenty of room. The senior center, let them park there. This is totally asinine. Let the people that have it decide what they want. Paulette is Debo, 40 Nightly Road. Um, two issues. One, we talk about, the petition talks about moving this to Stockbridge Road. I understand that when Stockbridge Road property was put on to be purchased, it was, the wording was for town purposes. However, the argument that was made for that was for a new fire station. So does that mean that if the senior center gets moved up there and there's going to be parks and walking areas and everything else, that the fire station wouldn't be moved there or we'd have to now buy another property for the fire station? Second, um, I've heard people talk about, oh, well, people aren't going to take advantage of it. But my children do not go to the schools here. They're in college now. But yet my tax dollars are paying for the schools here. All the seniors that are here are paying for the schools. So why shouldn't this be a community project where everyone is paying a little bit for each generation? The seniors are paying for the schools. Why can't everyone else who either doesn't have children or has children pay for the seniors to have a place that meets code and is there for years to come? Um, no, we'll, we'll vote in the, we'll vote 23 and then 24. They're both non-binding, so I think we'll just... We know, <laughs> yeah. but we would like to have our votes for again. That's right, that's why I'm doing this tonight. Hold on, hold on, Jim. Maureen? Uh, Maureen Devine, 112 Rocky Hill. I move that we move the vote. There you go. I have a motion to move. I have a motion to move Article 23 and 24. And you have a second. Anybody who is in favor of that, signify with your green card. That's a majority. So we are now going to vote. And we are going to do a secret ballot vote. I know that might seem time consuming. Um, but... People were expecting a secret ballot vote, and that's what they're going to get. So what is going to happen now? And people, please listen to these instructions. You have your green voting card, okay? There are going to be two registrars in the back of the room. When you go, when you go back to the registrar, they are going to punch your green ticket signifying that you're a registered voter in the town of Hadley, and they are gonna hand you a ticket like this. And then on one half it says yes, and on one half it says no. You fold it in half, and you tear it in half, and you have a yes and a no vote. There's gonna be ballot boxes up here, okay, for each article. So they're bringing up the ballot boxes for 23 right now. Once you get your, your yes, no ticket, you are going to come down this center aisle and you are going to place the vote that you want counted into the ballot box. And we're going to get two trash cans up here and you'll throw the other half of that ballot into the trash can. I'll repeat that. There are going to be registrars at the back of the room. They are going to punch your green ticket so that the only people that are voting are registered town voters. They're going to hand you this ticket which is perforated, and it's yes and no. 
you tear it in half, and you place the vote you want counted into the white ballot box. Just, just so everybody knows, both of these, they're empty. I'll, I'll, I'll show the town attorney. They're taped, they're taped shut, but they are empty. We don't have an extra couple hundred votes in Okay? So, you'll get your green ticket. Your, your green will get punched. You will get this ticket. You will come up. The vote you want counted goes in the ballot box. And then we'll go back and we'll do it again for Article 24. Can we vote on whether we need to do this in secret ballot? No, it's it's my decision. My purview as moderator. He's totally confused. Okay, everyone. While they start to count those ballots, we're going to continue with the meeting. Article eight is the uh, FY18 budget. Um, so you know, it's ten o'clock. What we're going to do right now, most likely, is we are going to get through 8, 9, and 10 tonight. We're going to get through the budget, and we're going to get through the capital items. Town will vote to amend the vote taken on Article 1 of the special town meeting held on October 5th, 2017, relative to the FY 2018 budget as follows. Um, item 710, long-term debt and uh, principal, $1,111,380 is going to $1,148,441. Account 750 long-term debt interest is going from 143,695 to 106,634. Uh, Recommended by the Finance Committee 4-0 and the Select Board 5-0. Hold on, hold on. Let's move the question first. Motion reads: Move that the town adjust the accounts as printed in the warrant as delineated in Article 8 of the Annotown Town Meeting of May 3, 2018 and incorporated by the references herein. Do I have a motion? Second. Okay. Molly Keegan. Basically what happened is um, the town borrowed less capital in June of 2017 than we originally had anticipated. So more of the fiscal year 2018 loan payments uh, can be directed to principal that had been budgeted. So it's equivalent of just you know, making extra payments on your mortgage, if you will, if you have the cash flow. Um, so this article moves $37,000 uh, from interest payment to principal payment. And it's a budget neutral adjustment and fully in keeping with our FY 2018 debt exclusion calculations. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor, signify with your green card. Thank you. Opposed? Article 8 passes unanimously. Article 9 is the omnibus budget for FY 2019. <laughs> Motion reads, move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of 15 million seven hundred and seventy-two. $656 to appropriate from sewer receipts $1,117,603 to appropriate from water receipts $1,234,492 and to transfer from sewer reserves $10,000 transfer from water reserves $10,000 to take from 
MSBA Debt Fund Reserve, $2,444. And appropriate from Hadley Public Access Cable Finance Franchise Receipt, $72,261. Transfer from the Hadley Public Access Cable Franchise Reserve, $20,000. Transfer from stabilization, 53,316. <coughs> Transfer from the November 2014 premium balance, $928. For the maintenance and operation of the town in the fiscal year 2019 as recommended by the Finance Committee, including debt and interest, and to fix the salaries of all elected officials, including, if appropriate, select board, town clerk, town collector, town treasurer, Town Assessors, Town Constables, Board of Health, Electoral Under Oliver Smith Will, Planning Board, and Park and Rec Commission, and to provide a reserve fund. This article was approved, uh, approved by the Finance Committee 3-0 and the Select Board 5-0. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Discussion. Oh, the Finance Committee will read the line items. Let me find it. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Just to let everyone know, the town of Hadley is in very good financial uh, condition. We have very strong um, reserves and the, uh, the significant features of the budget, I just want to list a few. We have uh, level services, we have enhanced the public safety, particularly the fire and the uh, ambulance. We have enhanced building maintenance and we continue to follow our financial management policies. I'm going to go ahead and start the line items. Town moderator, expense $100 for a total of $100. Select board, chair and members, zero. Other salaries, $51,038. Expenses, $18,483 for a total of $69,521. Town administrator, salary, $93,779. Expenses, $1,600 with a total of $95,379. Finance Committee, Chair and Members, zero. Expenses, $250 for a total of $250. Reserve Fund, $50,000 for a total of $50,000. Town Accountant, Salaries, $5,000. Salaries and Expenses is $82,350 for a total of $87,350. Assessors, Chair and Members, zero. Other salaries, $66,305, expenses $21,922 for a total of $88,227. Treasurer, salary, $60,055. Other salaries, $46,074, expenses $33,620 for a total of $139,749. Tax collector, collector salary $60,963, other salaries $38,794, and expenses $13,967, for a total of $113,724. Town Council, legal expenses $36,380, for a total of $36,380. Town Clerk, salary. $58,912, other salaries, $15,229. Expenses, $5,150 for a total of $79,291. Board of Registrars, salaries, $9,420. Expenses, $15,100 for a total of $24,520. Conservation Commission expenses, $3,110 for a total of $3,110. Planning Board, Chair, uh, salary, 
uh, salary for the clerk, $500, and members, uh, $1,200. Other salaries, $5,592. Expenses, $10,480, for a total of $18,372. Board of Appeals, salaries, $1,135, and expenses, $900. Total of $2,035. Insurance, property insurance, uh, $106,500 for a total of $106,500. Town building, senior center, $35,350. Town hall, $63,225. North Hadley Hall, $11,300, and Russell School, $1,950, for a total of $111,825. Mr. Moderator, I move the previous line items. Thank you. Any questions about the previous red line items? Certainly. Uh, I'd like to know why the select board went up 3,000. Why the town administrator went up 2,000? Why was the assessor's level funded? Why was the treasurer go up $2,000? Why was the tax collector level funded? Why was the town clerk level funded? Would somebody explain to me how town employees, if they're not all treated fair and equal, how can you give a bonus to, to a certain favorites or whatever they are, but it's not consistent. Explain. David Nixon. So I think the heart of your question goes to the cost of living adjustment for town employees. We're in the middle of communion contract negotiations on three uh, collective bargaining agreements. When those are settled, we'll have an ability to give uh, COLAs to the union people and we'll have a sense of how much COLA we should be giving to the non-union people. So when we meet again in the fall, and we will be meeting again in the fall, we'll make those budget adjustments so that those people who are not getting increases will get the increase that, uh, that is given out to the unions. In terms of the other increases, there are increases that are contractual by nature, uh, and I think that covers most of what you're asking about. You're all appointed. And yourself, explain to me why why you get a $2,000 bonus in one year, and other people's get zero. That, that to me, is outrageous. That's by contract. I guess they got to redo their contract. Hi, I'm Melissa Alamizi, 107 Rocky Hill Road. I just have a question about line item 198 under town buildings, the North Abbey Hall. Um, could you just explain to me the increase? It almost doubled for a defunct building. Thank you. The increase is uh, from the FY18 allocations. If you remember at the Springtown meeting of uh, FY18, we had no money in the account for the North Hadley Village Hall. That was because we were going to be selling that uh, property. We were in fact in, con in negotiations with the pr prospective uh, uh, buyer. Those, those uh, negotiations fell through and at the fall town meeting we raised half a year's worth of uh, maintenance and operation for that building. And now we have the full 12 months to uh, uh, fund. So that's the reason why I see my increase there. I'm Linda Sanderson, the town treasurer. I just want to point out there's no bonus in the treasurer's budget. The extra $2,000 is fully um, it's all expenses, and that is Harper's payroll service increases, and also our um, uh, the pay the borrowing fees that we have to pay to our advisors when we borrow for all of these buildings. Those fees go up. That's two thousand dollars going directly to expenses. Thank you, Linda. 
Could someone up there tell us what all this figures are gonna cost us when we walk out of this room? What is the, what can we see a tax increase on all these articles? Not a surprise when we get the tax bill. You won't get a surprise in the tax bill until the fall when the actual budget is set and then the select board has a meeting to set the tax rate. You, you just paid a tax bill that had your estimated tax throughout the year. Edwin Latusco on 16 Sartre Street. Um, uh, Board of Appeals uh, 176, is that a minus sign in front of the 2000 or is it just a bug on my sheet? I think it's a bug on your sheet. <laughs> you, you promise? It's not on my sheet. I don't think there's a negative number. Any other? Donald Pitt. I commend the Finance Committee. There's a lot of creative financing that went on to prepare this budget. Uh, the ominous budget and what it's going to cost us for the articles. My only question is, like every fall, how much free cash are we gonna really need this fall to build up to balance this budget? Do you wanna answer that now or do you wanna wait until the end of the line items? Because you guys know those numbers. Let's let's stick with the line items that were read right now. We'll tie into that Donald at the end, okay? Is there any other questions on the line items that were read? Hearing none, all in favor, signify with your green card. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Dan, Dan's always opposed. Thank you, Dan. Anybody abstaining? The line items pass. 225 to 1. Who's up next? Valerie is going to read the following line items. Communication Center. Salaries $242,126. Expenses $55,340,043. For a total of $297,456. Annual expenses, $267,500 for a total of $267,500. Gas inspector, salary, $3,442. Expenses, $1,115 for a total of $4,557. Plumbing inspector. Okay, let me do that again. Building inspector, $90,548 for salaries and expenses $5,042 for a total of $95,590. Gas inspector, salary $3,442, expenses $1,115 for a total of $4,557. Plumbing inspector, $6,002. For salaries, expenses, $755 for a total of $6,757. School department, salaries and expenses, $7,039,167 for a total of $7,039,167. Highway construction and maintenance, salaries, $1,000,000. 
422,342. Expenses, 314,310 for a total of 736,652. Snow and ice, salaries, $70,973. Expenses, 111,250 for a total of 182,223. Street lighting, expenses, 21,885,000 for a total of $21,885. Highway building maintenance, expenses, $144,750 for a total of $144,750. Cemetery, $5,505 salary, $5,505 and expenses $12,830 for a total of $18,335. Board of Health, salary for the chair, $1,850, salary for the clerk, $1,650, member, $1,450, other salaries, $11,100, expenses $20,385 for a total of $36,435. Council on Aging, salaries $84,077, expenses $4,960 for a total of $89,037. Veteran Services, expenses $104,000 for a total of $104,000. Oliver Smith will elector stipend $100. Mr. Moderator, I move the previous line. Thank you, Valerie. Any questions about the following line items? At 1 and 2 School 116 Stockbridge Street, I see the recommended is on the school department, there is a difference of a bunch of money. And could there be an explanation as to why? That's all. Between the recommended and what was funded? Yeah. Okay, hold on. I'll get an answer for you. School department asked for an increase of a hundred and uh, something like a hundred and fifty eight thousand three hundred and sixteen dollars. We're not able at this time to do all of that, but we can do a hundred and five thousand. And we are intending to come back at the fall town meeting to restore their funded non request at fifty three thousand three hundred and sixteen dollars. So this will be a two step process. Any, any other questions about the line items that were read? Hearing none, all in favor, signify with your green card. Thank you. Opposed? Abstained? Line items pass. We have the final ones. Mr. Gabriel. All right, thank you, Mr. Moderator. So we have public library, salaries, 141,813. Expenses, 59,305, for a total of 201,118. Park Commission, salary chair, zero. Members, zero. Other salaries, 35,849. Expenses, 14,245 for a total of 50,094. Historical Commission, expenses 950 for a total of 950. Long-term debt, principal, 1,162,756. Interest, 107,924 for a total of 1,270,680. Benefits, retirement, 1,105,022. Workers count, 75,000. Unemployment, 30,000. Health insurance, 1,241,000. Life insurance, 2,800. Medicare town share, 133,000. OPEB, 263,838. Stabilization, zero. 
Accident insurance, 45,000, for a total of 2,895,660. Cable TV and public access, salaries 17,000, reserve fund 20,000, expenses 40,371 for a total of 77,371. Wastewater division, salaries 304,667, reserve fund 10,000, long term debt, principal and interest 126,305. Other expenses, 474,250, for a total of 915,222. Water division, salaries, 349,430. Reserve fund, 10,000. Long-term debt, principal and interest, 170,360. Other expenses, 509,235, for a total of 1,039,025. So, Mr. Moderator, I move the previous line items. Thank you, Gabriel. Any questions about the line items that were previously read? The, uh, the line item, um, the life insurance. Who gets that life insurance policy? Life insurance? Yeah, right here. It says life insurance $2,800. That's a, that's a small life insurance uh, policy that's available to town employees who are qualified for benefits. Uh, I think that the, uh, the I think that the entire amount is like thirty-five dollars per month uh, per year per uh, employee. So all the employees get this. All the ones who are eligible for benefits and who choose that benefit. Hello? Mike Serzinski, 10 Morrill Drive. I just wanted to recognize Gabe Owen on the Finance Committee. Uh, he's going to be leaving us. He was just accepted at Northwestern University in Chicago to go to the Kellogg School to get an MBA. So thanks for all your work over the last few years. We will be missed on the Finance Committee. Any other questions regarding the line items that were read? Hearing none, I'll please signify in favor by raising your green card. Opposed? Two nineteen one. Uh, any abstentions? Okay. And Article 9 passes because it was a two thirds majority and we passed the law. So we're on to Article 10. You want to do the totals? Hold on one second. So, the total budget for 2019 is going to be $18,293,700. And Mr. Pitchens, he was asking how much free cash we are using. So I'm going to get that number for him right now. In the FY 2019 budget, free cash used for recurring expenses within the budget totals $197,500. So out of that $18,293,700, $197,500 is free cash. That's certified free cash. It's not yet. It's not certified yet. We'll have to finish it up in the fall like we always do. Article 10. Article 10 is a capital article. So there's going to be a couple different funding mechanisms. So there's going to be a couple different votes. You'll notice 
in your warrant that there's no capital planning committee recommendation. Some of these came in late and the capital planning committee was not able to meet, so that's why there's no votes uh, by the capital planning committee. Motion reads, motion number one, there's four different motions for number 10. Motion one, move that the town transfer $13,000 from free cash for school zone lights for the Department of Public Works, associated expenses, and 5,000 from free cash for website redesign for the select board. So here's another $18,000 worth of free cash being used. 13 for the school zone lights and 5,000 for website design. Um, select board. Select board's gonna speak to this. Choice Trump. The school zone lights will replace the damages and missing yellow flashing lights on Route 9 near Hopkins Academy. The replacement lights will be solar powered. Funding is by free cash and there is no impact on taxes. The website redesign will upgrade the town website and make it more accessible and easier for department heads to use. Funding is by free cash and there is no impact on taxes. I have a motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? No, just we're doing them, those two. Hearing none, all in favor, signify with your green card. Opposed. Motion number one passes unanimously. Motion number two for Article 10 reads, move that the town transfer $100,000 from sewer impact fees for accepted, for accepted vehicle and associated expenses for the Department of Public Works. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Joyce, you speaking of this one also? The DPW septage vehicle replaces a broken vehicle that is used for a routine sewer work. Funding is by sewer impact fees. There is no impact on sewer rates or taxes at this time. The reason that there is no uh, capital uh, committee uh, recommendation on this because it came in at the end, we had to reopen the warrant and put it on and then uh, close the warrant again. Uh, we have part of the truck, um, the part that collects the sewage. Uh, we needed the truck, which has been out of commission for some time now. So we're just replacing the vehicle and not the apparatus that goes on top of it. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor of motion number two for Article 10, signify with the green card. Thank you. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion number two passes 219. I mean, unanimously, excuse me. Motion number three for Article 10. Move that the town appropriate $170,000 to pay the costs in design and building in the HVAC system for the elementary school, including payment of all costs incidental and related thereto 
that meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the select board is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, section one of the general laws or pursuant to any other enabling authority to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of the insurance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of the cost approved by this vote in accordance with chapter 44, section 20 of the general laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Do I have a motion? I have a second. Choice. The Hadley Elementary School needs HVAC upgrades and replacement, and previous town meeting raised four hundred thousand dollars for this project. <clears throat> the project was bid twice, and each time the bids came in above budget. The hundred seventy thousand dollars is needed to close the funding gap in time for work to be done this summer. Funding is by borrowing within the levy, so there will be no, not, not be an impact on taxes. Debt service within the levy will remain within our targets, i.e. about $160,000 a year. What, Dan? Dan, it's 130 Hockney Road. I see you're looking for $170,000 for this and $855,400 for a fire substation. I also see in your stabilization account, you have $2,132,229. I remember when I was on the select board, we had a goal of a million dollars. I think I've been off, I don't know, how many years, six, five? Why do we have two million as opposed to one, and maybe we could pay this off instead? Is there a need for $2 million? Explain. The purpose of the stabilization account is basically that, is to keep things as stable as possible, and even in situations of emergency or calamity. Uh, we have a policy for stabilization. We need to keep our stabilization at a, uh, an amount above 10% of the net operating revenues for the town. So basically, whatever the revenues for the year are, we want to have a stabilization account that's somewhere in the neighborhood of 10% of that. So that's about $2 million. I don't know, it doesn't seem right. Like I said, six years ago, it was only uh, a million, and now it's over two million and rising. You know, that's money everybody here makes sure that we have it, you know, it's money we don't spend. And it seems like every time you want a big thing, you keep coming up to the taxpayer to pay, or you could pay this off and replenish that fund in four or five years. That's my point. Thank you. Any other? Questions in regarding to motion number three for the additional $170,000 for the HVAC system at the elementary school. Hearing none, all in favor, please signify with your green card. Thank you. Opposed? One, two, three. Abstentions? One. Motion three passes, 185 to three to one. Motion number four, to move the town appropriate $855,400 to pay for the cost of design and building a fire substation, including the payment of all costs incidental or related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the select board is authorized to borrow set amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, section one of the general laws or pursuant to any other enabling authority to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore, provided, however, that the vote taken here under shall be expressly, expressly contingent upon the approval by the voters to exclude the amounts to pay for the bonds or notes authorized for this purpose 
from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half, so called. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium apply to the payments of the cost of the issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay any such cost by a like amount. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? The fire substation project requires additional money to add to the 2.9 million already appropriated. The $855,400 is funded by borrowing for 20 years above the levy and the impact on taxes. First year home, the rate would be uh, 0.7 rate increase at an amount of $22.81 for the average single family, and the average year after that would be 0 .58, 0 0.58 rate increase, or a total of $18.64 for the average single family on the increase. Um, we had to add extra things. Mike, do you want to elaborate on um, what was taken out of the original um, bid that, the process that we did before. I know that one of them, which was most important, was the um, sprinkler system, uh, but there were others. You want this here? You want to go there? Good evening. So uh, the, the last town meeting when we passed over this to, to take a look back at this project, um, I was tasked with going out and seeing what we could actually do for the actual 2.9 million that was originally appropriated. Unfortunately, the, uh, the OPM reviewed all of the fees um, with escalation since, since, uh, since we started the project, overages, contingency fees, uh, some fees to redesign it for where it's being relocated because it cannot be built on the, the ball field next to the North Adley Hall. Um, Unfortunately, the number was, it was, it was more. Um, just to put it in perspective, if we wanted to spend the $2.9 million now, uh, the picture that you saw at that town meeting would not be the same picture you would see today. So you would have to cut, if we wanted to truly only spend the $2.9 million, you'd be cutting the building in half, and it would be basically a box with metal siding and shingles and just a, just a small, small facility. So the additional 855,000 is to cover all those costs, the contingencies, which we didn't have enough money in the previous budget to put a sprinkler system in it. And as firefighters, we are always promoting sprinklers to protect our equipment, our families, our lives. And that's one thing we thought was really important to be in that structure. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Any questions? Mr. Jacobson. Ken Jacobson, 12 Bristol Lane. Uh, where are we putting it? I know I was here, but I'm, it was a while ago. So where are we building it? That's up at the intersection of River Drive and Stockbridge, correct? On that parcel. Yes. Mr. Pitt. Okay. I was on the uh, fire subs committee from its inception until it was put on hold, and then I resigned my position. The problem I have with this now is it's adding another $22.50 to the 95 that was originally projected. But my bigger problem is the board just voted to go ahead with an ambulance service. Capital planning in their projections have a cost of $248,000 for a new ambulance. And secondly, they have an update to accommodate all of these ambulance situations at Center Station at 3.7 million. All of the money that's going up to North Hadley now, it doesn't make sense anymore with a full-time department. You know, I only live a mile and a half away. I'd love to have a new fire station up there, but I'd rather have the money go into Center Station, build it like it should be, and have a full-time ambulance service out of there.
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to make it very clear to you that yes, you've all been kind enough to start building up the fire department of the town of Hadley. I just want to tell you all that the folks that you have now provided us, one of them, which is sitting over there right now, are your new full-time deputy chief. Um, I can tell you right now that you are going to have daytime staffing, 12 hours a day, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. That adds two firefighters on that shift, plus either me or that gentleman over there. That means three of us will be responding during daytime hours. At 6 p.m., we go back to a call force for the full-time folks that want to go home and actually maybe spend some time with their families, still have to come back. If there aren't call force people, which I've expressed to everybody here before, call force numbers are down. We're recruiting consistently, constantly. Folks don't have the time to do it, and they can't afford it. We're trying to, we, we, I, you maybe heard of the select board meeting that we're doing a junior firefighter program through Hawkins Academy, working with the schools. You know, we're reaching out every chance we can to try and get new recruits to come on board. But I'm telling you, at night, at two o'clock in the morning, when we're rolling out to pull somebody off of a tree or pull somebody out of the house, you hear the news every day of what's happening. So I'm telling you right now that it's call force people at night. God bless them for getting up and helping us. But this is not this is not a full-time department 24-7 we're talking about. As far as the ambulance service, the 200 and 67 or 247,000 that's being requested. We haven't even, we have not even begun the contract negotiations with that yet. That is not set in stone at this time. We are working on that to put together the best contract for the town of Hadley so the town of Hadley gets the best possible service with an ambulance that's parked in your fire station to respond to all areas of town 24 7 with advanced level of care. That means the folks that live out in Hockenham, instead of waiting up to 15 minutes, may have to wait half that time because that ambulance is going out of our station rather than out of the town of Amherst. Amherst is a great department. There's never been a question about that. We are trying to improve upon the services for all of you. That's the bottom line, end of story. I love the town of Hadley. I'm committed to it 100%, and that's why I think it's really important that we make sure that our call, call force folks Byron Chudzik, who is a longtime member, uh, call force, retired deputy chief, assistant chief, I should say, and chief. Uh, if, you, if you truly look at how you fight a structure fire, you need a minimum of 20 firefighters to do that. You all heard about the fire in Amherst this past weekend, three-story structure. You see how many firefighters showed up for that. We have fires like that in Hadley. Okay, we have emergencies like that. It's important that we you know, we support the call force guys, and at night when they have a station up in the north end of town, so that truck can roll up to all those houses up in the north end of town. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. I'd like to say this, that I support the, the fire department 100%. I served on that department. I served at, on a rescue department. And these guys saved my life one time, so I do thank them for that. And that's, they're there for all of us. Any other questions about motion number four? Because this is a two and a half, it requires a two-third majority. All in favor signify with your green card. Thank you. Opposed? One, two, three, four, five, six. Thank you. Abstention? Motion four passes. 160, six against, with four abstentions. At this time, I have the counts from the two petitioned articles, and I will read the results. Before, before I do, I would like to thank the town clerk, Jeff Spanknable, and all of the registrars and Mr. Andy Kilpaki for the helping of the county. 
Um, it's not easy to do a secret ballot, and that's why we don't do them very often. Um, but thank you very much for all your hard work. For Article 23, Article 23, if you remember, was to move the senior center um, to North Hadley on the town-owned property there on River Drive and Stockbridge Street. The official vote was 124 yes votes, 323 no votes. Total votes counted was 447. So, yes, that petition would fail. Uh, Article 24, this was to rescind the money um, that hadn't been spent yet. And the results for Article 24 was 117 yes votes, 299 no votes. Total votes counted was 416. So petition Article 24 would also fail. It's almost 11 o'clock. I would entertain a motion to continue this town meeting to next Thursday if people are so inclined. Do I have a second? All in favor of continuing until next Thursday, signify with your green card. Thank you. Opposed? Um, 7 o'clock, Hopkins Academy, right here. In no. Thank you.